I recently bought a used Pixel 6a because I thought it'd be fun to make a phone that is untraceable and operates as a cyberpunk multi-tool. I've installed Graphene OS on it and it's completely degoogled, so I'm making this video just to show my setup so far. Instead of a cellular communicator, this is going to be used for accessing the internet and networks completely anonymously. I'll be doing more things with this in the future, but for now this is just my first dive into making a phone as untraceable as possible. Alright, so the first thing you probably notice is how it looks. I know my camera's picking up a lot of blue light from the screen, but in real life, I can't see much of the blue light at all. So that definitely helps it look like a manga panel or something off of an e-ink tablet. The background is a panel from a manga called Ruby Dragon, and I'm using Nova Launcher instead of the regular default Android launcher for my home screen layout. And the icon pack I'm using is called Snow. I think with just these three things, it gives the home screen a look that I really like, just in a faction while being somewhat minimal. So now I'm going to move on to the actual network and security stack. So first things first, I mention it all the time, the number one way you'll ever be tracked back to your device is through your device's MAC address. MAC stands for Media Access Control, and it's a unique identifier for any network component on your device. Whether it's the Wi-Fi radio or an Ethernet adapter, this is the piece of data that a router will pair up with an IP address when it assigns you one. Not only that, but the network admin can usually identify what device is connected, your OS, and what applications are attempting to reach out to the internet before you're even allowed through the gateway. So for this, I have non-persistent randomized MAC address enabled. This basically ensures that whenever I disconnect and reconnect to a network, my true hardware address will never be seen. It's always going to be a spoofed, randomized string in the form of a MAC address. When it comes to actually accessing the internet, I took a lot of inspiration from a YouTuber called The Hated One and his mobile setup. My phone is set to block all connections unless the VPN is turned on, and my VPN client of choice is Mulvad VPN. This is not sponsored, I don't even think Mulvad does sponsors, but they are a provider that completely ensures the anonymity of its users. They don't keep logs like other VPN providers do. They don't ask you to make an account or even add an email. They basically just tell you to pay however you want. And heck, you can even send them a $5 bill and they'll accept it as payment. I also don't have a SIM card in this phone. However, I always keep it on airplane mode because even without a SIM, the cellular radio is always reaching out to cell towers. As for my software stack, the normal web browser I'm going to be using is called Vanadium. It's a privacy-focused Chromium fork built especially for Graphene OS. I also have the Tor browser for some deep web sightseeing if I want to. Now, there is a big debate going on as to whether or not you should use a VPN with Tor. One side says that you should use a VPN because the addresses of Tor nodes are public, so your ISP knows when you browse, which is technically true. Then you have the other side saying that if you use a VPN to browse Tor, that will put more red flags up because whoever's monitoring the VPN server will become extra suspicious. The easiest solution to all of this is just by using a Tor bridge. A Tor bridge is a private IP that you connect to that then connects you to the entry node. So VPN or no VPN, all your traffic goes through the bridge before it even hits the Onion network. Now all cyberpunks can be friends. The next thing I'll be using pretty often is the Wi-Fi Analyzer app that you can download directly from Fdroid. This is basically a spectrum analyzer like Wi-Fi Man, except it doesn't attempt to access every sensor on the phone to run. It does still ask for GPS permission just so it can determine how far away access points are, but that's about it, really. And then last but not least is Termux. Termux is a Linux shell terminal for your phone, and it's basically going to be what gives the phone the same utility as a PC. Many things I would use a PC for for development or network analysis can all be done from the phone thanks to Termux. It's pretty low key, and it just looks like you're texting or something when you use it, as opposed to whipping out your laptop or just going full hacker man in public. However, I know a lot of people don't like using the virtual keyboard with Termux, so you can always use a Bluetooth keyboard if you want. Personally, I think that makes you stand out a lot more, but you know, it's your phone. You do whatever you want with it. And honestly, I think that's kind of the point to this video. I know some people would look at this and say that this is a hacker tool or this is some burner phone, but no, it's just my cyberpunk Swiss army knife. Not really a phone built on paranoia, but just on principle. Phones are gateways to the world, but that gate doesn't have to open up to the highest bidder. It also doesn't have to be an airplane black box. Honestly, your phone can just be yours.